Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my channel, Do Ministry Gaming. And in this video, we are gonna do some giga, giga juice mapping in Valdo's Rest and spend 650 to 700 chaos per map investment to find out just how much juice is too much juice. Now, I recently did a video where we did some high investment uh, mapping in Valdo's Rest already, and you can find the link in the description below to that video. Uh, but in that video, I spent about 300 chaos per map and made quite a healthy profit. Uh, and from there, really, I was curious, uh, just how much can you invest in a map? And are you going to continue uh, to see returns as you ramp up that investment? Or do you, is there at some point you just stop making money? Uh, and so we've doubled that now. And in this video, we're going to spend 650 to 700 chaos per map and find out if we can continue to make the type of returns that we did uh, when we spent 300 chaos per map. And so as usual in this video, I'm going to cover the setup of what I am doing uh, and then uh, show everybody the loot and then talk a little bit about uh, the analysis of the returns in terms of per map and on a total basis. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so to start, I'm going to talk about the setup and uh, this is the stash tab that is housing my setup right now. As usual, I'm going to do 10 Canyon maps. Now, the difference between uh, this test and the last test is that the last test, I uh, ran only the Nemesis mod on the Canyon maps. Uh, now, in this test, one of the ways that we're going to continue to juice these maps is by also running uh, beyond on the Canyon maps as well. So these maps have both the Nemesis mod and the Beyond mods, all 10 of them. And these are actually 1.5 exalts each. Uh, if you were to buy these or if you were to roll them, it's pretty hard to do. Uh, and so uh, I spent 1.5 exalts each on these. So this is 15 exalts. I think I paid a little bit more for this last one because it's 100 quantity and, uh, and also an elder map. But anyway, about 1.5 exalts per map. From there, uh, we are running all winged scarabs this time around, whereas last time we only ran the winged harbinger. But anyway, to go over those, I'm running the winged harbinger, which is about an exalt. Uh, the winged blight scarab, uh, because I am running uh, blight as well now in these maps. And the winged blight scarabs were about 40 chaos a piece. Uh, then the winged breach scarabs, which are 40 chaos a piece. And then the winged legion scarabs, which is 50 chaos a piece. <laughs> And then from there, uh, we are going to run Delirium Orbs uh, instead of rolling the Mirror of Delirium on the uh, Watchstones themselves uh, to try to add more juice to the map. And the Delirium Orb I'm running is the most expensive one, which is the Skittering Delirium Orb. And these cost, uh, when I bought them, 115 Chaos each. And then from there, uh, the four Watchstones we're going to run, of course, are the usual uh, Auspicious, which is Harbingers in Areas Drop Rare Valley Currency Shards. Uh, but the, for the other three, I'm switching it up a little bit. Uh, I do still have one Harbinger uh, Watchstone, and I'm, I'm running one Harbinger because I actually rolled a bunch of Nemesis mods uh, on a lot of these Watchstones already. But then I've actually replaced the other two with uh, an interesting new one, which is Merchant's Chromium Watchstone. And these gives uh, rare monsters and areas have 10% chance to drop an additional basic currency item. And so because this is a Nemesis strategy, where I'm stacking uh, all the rare monsters I can get, uh, I feel like this is going to turn out really well. Uh, but then when it comes to the Awakened Sextant rolls, if you recall from the last video, uh, I hard rolled into Beyond and Nemesis, but then kind of let the other two float in terms of what mechanics I wanted. Uh, but this time around, uh, I'm going to roll Beyond, I'm going to roll Nemesis, and then uh, I think I'm going to hard roll into Blight as well. I've also specced in the Blight nodes in the Ascendancy Tree, which I'll talk about next. Uh, and then uh, I'll probably hard roll into Harbingers, drop additional currency shards as well. Uh, if not, uh, I'll take also Legion Encounter probably and maybe Abyss or Breach. And so uh, when you sum all this up, assuming you're spending 100 chaos per map on the Sextant rolls, which is probably light if I'm hard rolling to four mods, uh, we are talking about already 670 chaos per map investment, which is pretty, pretty steep. And we're going to see if we can make our money back on that or not. Now, uh, finally, the uh, Atlas Ascendancy, I am switching out of my Metamorph nodes uh, into Blight uh, and my Mass Mycelium. So we're going to give that a try. I think it might be better. Uh, the Metamorphs were good, but they weren't crazy. And so 
I'm running the Blight Scarab this time and getting uh, Mass Mycelium. And then also on top of that, I'm rolling Blight uh, onto my Washstones as well. So getting two Blight encounters per map uh, with Mass Mycelium, with the effects of the Wing Scarab. Uh, and so that is what I've done differently compared to the last test, which I ran hard into the Metamorphs. All right, and then finally, if you are new to the Valdo's Rest currency farming strategy, uh, you can check out the other video in my description below. Like I said, I've linked it. Uh, in that video, I actually talk in much more detail as to what this Nemesis strategy is for anyone who is new to it or, or is not familiar with how it works. And uh, that's all I got for the setup here. So without further ado, I will go and do the 10 maps and report back the results when I'm done. All right, we have completed the 10 maps and sorted all the loot in game here into these tabs. Uh, and the first thing you'll notice is that I dropped about six and a half tabs worth of loot uh, and then a three quarters of a tab of red maps, uh, including five blighted maps. And uh, the first thing to note is that this is uh, much more than what I got in the 300 chaos per map test. Uh, this is three to four tabs more uh, of stuff. And uh, one of the reasons, of course, is because of the scarabs. I got about a page of scarabs I didn't get in the last test because I never ran the uh, skittering delirium orb. Uh, I'll talk about it more in the in the um, analysis, but uh, spoiler alert, the skittering delirium orbs did not make their money back at all. None of them did uh, in any of the 10 maps. As a matter of fact, I lost quite a bit of money running those, uh, but it was good to know, uh, you know, and to understand whether they were worth running or not. Uh, the next thing is, uh, you know, starting from the top here, I did drop 16 raw exalts, uh, I guess between the raw exalts and the exalted shards. Uh, and if you remember from the 300 chaos per map test, I only dropped nine uh, exalted orbs uh, when you include the exalted shards as well. So I dropped seven extra uh, exalted orbs in this run over the 10 maps. Now, I got to say the exalted dro orb drops were... A pretty thin for the first nine maps it wasn't until the 10th map where i dropped i think six exalted or six of these came from the last map itself where i got i think pretty lucky so um without that you know it would have not actually scaled quite that well uh but anyway uh we can figure that out in the analysis there from here we did get four vault reliquary keys uh, and then the rest of these currencies i think the chaos orbs dropped quite a bit more uh, and then the rest of the smaller currencies did as well. The alteration orbs, uh, as you can see here, the alchemies and the uh, chromatics and the fusings. Uh, all those dropped in quite a bit more than uh, I did in the 300 chaos per map run. All right, and then from here, I did want to very quickly pull up the excellence next for all seven or eight of those uh, tabs of loot. Just uh, to do a little bit more analysis here, I don't usually do this. Uh, but there's one thing in particular I wanted to show, which is uh, as you grow down the list here, as you can see, the Exalted Orbs, 16 of them, was the highest value item. Uh, and then, of course, the 700 Chaos Orbs that I dropped. Uh, but from there, uh, really, the Awakened Sextants was the third most valuable item that I had dropped in aggregate. And then the fourth item and the fifth item and sixth item were Alterations, Fusings, and Chromatics. And the point I wanted to show here is that uh, these smaller currency items actually add up to quite a bit of value in these farming strategies. And if you're somebody who doesn't like picking up alterations or fusing ores or chromatic ores because they're not worth that much, uh, then uh, this type of mapping strategy probably isn't for you uh, because if you're not picking up these up, uh, you're definitely going to be losing money or it's going to feel like the profits aren't there uh, when in reality uh, they actually make up a large portion of the value more than anything else simulacrum splinters divine orbs ancient orbs you know uh, maps scarabs uh, you name it all right so on to the breakdown of how the maps went uh, this is the exact same table that i showed uh, in the 300 chaos per map uh, video as well but just to go over, each line represents a map. I did 10 of them. Uh, and across the top here, uh, I showed the four scarabs I ran, the price of the four scarabs, the map cost, the sextant cost uh, for what I rolled, the delirium orb price, uh, the master mission harbinger uh, on the map mod, uh, and then the total investment, total income, total profit um, columns. Uh, so each map, I did run the winged harbinger, winged abyss, winged breach, and winged legion. I did say winged blight at the beginning of the video. 
Uh, but after the first map, I come to realize that the Winged Blight Scarab does not stack with the uh, Blight Encounter Sextant mod, which uh, it should, but apparently it's bugged. And so that doesn't stack, even though they say additional, both of them. Uh, and so uh, when you put both of them together, you only get one Blight Encounter. So it was immediately not worth uh, for me to run the Winged Scarab anymore. And so what I ended up doing for the rest of the maps was running Winged Abyss Scarabs. Uh, and rolling the Blight mod onto the Sextants uh, was generally what I did. Uh, and, uh, you know, as discussed, all the scares around this time were around were winged. Uh, and uh, just to see if the extra juicing was worth it or not. And I'll probably tell you right now that it's not. But anyway, let's keep walking through it. Um, the Scarab, uh, the winged Harbinger Scarab was 125 Chaos uh, each when I bought them. Uh, winged Blight and Abyss were the same price, actually 40 Chaos a piece. Winged Breach was 40 Chaos a piece. Winged Legion, 50 Chaos a piece. The math was really where it was uh, quite a bit more expensive. Uh, in the 300 Chaos per map test, I ran the Nemesis mod only on the Canyon maps. Uh, but uh, for these ones, I ran the Nemesis and the Beyond mod on these maps. And each one of those maps cost me 1.5 Exalts to buy. And I bought all of them. And so uh, that was 188 chaos. But anyway, let's keep going on here. Uh, you know, the sections used, I didn't count each four maps. I just counted the total of sections that I ended up using, which was 284, and I divided by the 10 maps. Uh, this time around, I am running a Delirium Orb, and not only the Delirium Orb, but I'm running the Skittering Delirium Orb, uh, which is the Scarab Reward type, which is the most expensive Delirium Orb that you can get right now. Um, it, they are 115 chaos each when I bought them. I thought almost for certain this was going to pay out, uh, but uh, to my surprise, actually this last column here tracks the scarab value of each of these maps. Uh, I didn't make my money back once, okay? I actually lost money hand over fist, 50 to 60 cows per map that I lost, uh, except for the last one where I just got some crazy drops, but still I didn't even break even on the Delirium Orb itself. Uh, and so the total... You know, uh, I paid for the Dillion Wars was 1,150 Chaos, and I only made back 600. And so I'd lost a lot of currency running these. Anyway, and then afterwards, uh, the Master Mission, of course, I'm running Alva. The map mod, I'm running the Harbinger map mod, uh, which is 4C. And so the total investment for each of these maps was 704 Chaos, okay? Uh, so all over double what I did before in the test. And uh, the total income I made back, so the total I spent was 7,035. Total income I made was actually 7,854. I did break even, and I made a little bit of money, but it wasn't nearly as much as I made in the 300 chaos per test map. I only made a profit of 819 over the 10 maps. Uh, and down here, if uh, you take that over the time that it took, and this took longer for me to run too than the 300 chaos per map, uh, there is uh, significant uh, more looting uh, in these maps than there was in the other maps. Uh, and so it took me a lot longer to do the maps. But anyway, uh, the profit per hour was 246. So much, much less than the 300 chaos per map. And you can see that on this chart here. Uh, total investment in the blue line per map. And then the orange bars are my income or revenue. Six of the maps made money and four of the maps lost money. And so this is a much more break-even proposition than 300 chaos per map. A test that we did, which was an absolute killer for profit. All right. And so to dissect that very quickly, I mean, uh, you know, when you scale up the investment, you're definitely making more income. Uh, but the uh, amount that you invest for what you get in return incrementally uh, becomes less and less efficient, right? And so your rate of return actually goes down. And so uh, what I'll say is, you know, moving to these wing scarabs uh, and paying 30 to 40 C each more for each one of these breaches, uh, um, scarabs um, outside of the Harbinger is probably not worth it, you know, to get that extra legion uh, from between a rusted scarab and the and the wing scarab was not worth it. Um, and same with the breach. Uh, but a big, big part of it, I think, was the map cost. The, you know, to have the Nemesis and the Beyond was 1.5 exalts uh, versus just Nemesis. You can roll yourself for maybe, I don't know, 10C per map, 20C per map, whatever. Uh, and so that's a big, big difference that I definitely don't think is worth. I mean, you are dropping a lot more when you're running double beyond. Uh, you're running one beyond from the map and one beyond from your sextant. But uh, it didn't pan out to be quite worth it. 
Uh, and then finally, uh, I think the sextant rolling is okay. I don't mind paying into that. That's definitely been worth it. But uh, the Skittering Delirium Orb is 100% not worth it, in my opinion, now. Uh, after these 10 maps, as you can see, uh, they are quite expensive. Uh, but uh, I uh, only, I never made back my money. In fact, I lost a lot. Um, you're really going to have to drop like two Gilded Harbinger or Scarabs, for example, to actually... Uh, get close to making back your money on that one uh, and so i would not recommend running the lean orb so basically um going back to the 300 chaos per map uh, test was actually probably as close to optimal maybe as i as you can get um from you know as far as qualitatively thinking about uh the returns on on what i've scaled up here uh, i know for sure skidding isn't making sense the 1.5 x per map uh, didn't look very good and then the wing scarabs maybe you can argue the wing scarabs but uh you know that uh, that probably didn't work out that well either all right everybody thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please like and subscribe also stream on twitch tuesdays thursdays and saturdays times are in the description below thanks again and i'll see you next time